Yes, so once again, I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and to some of you, good night, depending on your time zone. And of course, on this platform, the seventh dimension, I want to believe that we have given enough introduction section to this platform to enable us to know the areas or aspect of our life that we deal with and of course this is a continuation of our last thing which was prayer religion and prayer religion and its implication and of course we have tried to look at prayer in the light of religion but of course, I am trying to bring us back home by connecting back to how our ancestors used to operate, used to function, used to organize their life in different areas and dimensions, which eventually has been corrupted and a lot of dissection of information to keep our mind unprofitable. We are still on the same team, religion and its implication. And this morning, I want us to briefly pay attention to some object of prayer. Now, it is prayer that gives birth to religion. Or do we say it is religion that gives birth to prayer? In either way, the world is built on dream. And that is why the first contact of any man, any being, is to have a dream. This dream can come to manifestation when it is supported by prayers. Our ancestors understand this truth and then they equipped themselves with prayer, not in the manner we are following it today. But of course, some of us ignorantly initiate these processes and we have tremendous results. I can imagine if you know how to make use of all the objects of prayer. Let me come back a little bit. Life is born out of dream. And whether it succeeds or not is determined by the level the magnitude of prayer that is allotted to it. If you can dream, if you dream, it is a way of God communicating to you. And by implication, when you have divine direction, divine guidance, when you understand that your dream, whether good or bad, has a significant role to play in your life. You will not joke with them. Whether it is a good dream, whether it is a bad dream, they are all meant to serve a purpose. And you are not supposed to leave it there. And so in the first place, if you don't dream, I'm talking about literally now, you don't dream, you have an issue. And most of us have stayed more than 10 years. You can't even remember when you dream last. If this does not mean that you are not wealthy, this does not mean that you are not successful, this does not mean that you may not uh, emerge in the upper class wherever you belong to, but something is certainly wrong. Well, we are not looking at dream this morning, but we are looking at the object of prayers and the need for you to step up. I mean, move up in your prayer lives. And now, some persons will believe that prayer is about the shouting, prayer is about the drama, 
dramatizing the whole process and and we have many idea what prayer is but in a simple words or definition it's a means of communicating between one to another it could be between man and man it could even be between a master and a slave it could be between god and his creature it's just a means of communication you need to talk you need to communicate you need to speak to situation you need to speak to circumstance but they have objects of prayers and now let's look at some of them to enable us equip ourselves for the journey ahead we look at one of those objects of prayer number one we look at native chalk when our ancestors and according or in line to many of our traditions when they come out in the morning to offer prayers you can say it's to the gods or to the goddess or but when they come out to offer prayer the last time i check and i've encountered them they call the god the creator of heaven and earth yes some of them will call amadioha some of them will call akiemoho some of them will call apayumudi some of them will call ikimba many deity i'm not looking at whether we criminalize it whether we demonize it or not but they were certainly pointing out to a direction to us we are fast to see it's evil they are invoking the gods of their deity but i need you to follow them and reason from a different direction you will see irrespective of the name of deity you think they are invoking and you condemn it but then you go to the christian center you pray for angel michael and angel gabriel to come and intervene when there is god it shows that either you are ignorant or you are hypocrites because the people who invoke angel gabriel and angel michael understand that there is a supreme being and each time our ancestors offer prayer they can call amadioha they can call ikinga they can call any other deity but they acknowledge that there is a god of god there's a song in my dialect he used to say ezindeze that means there is a king of king it's not a, it, that one is not you don't consider it as evil because it was easily adopted let me not digress further now our ancestors when they come out in the morning to pray they always have a train or a saucer in it they have certain objects those are our focus this morning number one most of them have native chalk why do they have native chalk in that they are praying saucer that plate they used to keep object of prayer why do they keep native chalk there find out from your father you see find out from your ancestors find out from your elders who are alive what is the implication because each time you wake up you see all those things on the table in your sitting room in your father's room is fetish you conclude is demonic and it's evil but you go out and in a more modernized way you buy it what is the rule of the native chalk and then one should begin to ask what is the rule of ash wednesday if you condemn native chalk you approve ash wednesday something is missing but you all dare to play the same rule one native chalk number two salt they add salt as an object of prayer it will amaze you that any stream that has salty water 
is highly medicinal. <laughs> they are not common. If you know the rules salt can play spiritually and physically, you will understand why it is constantly referenced in the Bible. Thou art the salt. It has spiritual implication. They are object of prayers. You go to some spiritualists, you go to some pastors, they will tell you, go and beat with salt. To you, depending on the duration you are coming from or who is your mentor, you can easily conclude that it is fetish, but they are object of prayer. I'm coming. And then you look at the next one, number three, oil. It's everywhere. Anointing oil, anointing oil, anointing oil. It has a significant role it plays in our prayer life. When last did you use it? I'm not talking in terms of modern way of praying. I'm talking about going back to your root. Why was it used? How is it used? You don't know, I can assure you, or most of you don't know. But of course, you know how to use anointing oil. And so it's not fetish, because it was introduced to you by the advanced world. But these were some of the objects of prayer your father used even before the invent of the church. Who taught them how to use oil? Another object of prayer. Drink. Many people condemn drink. But in the midst of trying to condemn alcohol, they get the whole thing complicated. It's part of the object of prayer. In Genesis 15, among all the verses where drink was used, they try to dilute it so it looks like it's cook and fanta. It's not cook and fanta. It is hot drink. Abraham set up an altar to pray to God. Abraham, you all know this, is the father of faith. After setting up the altar, he poured drink. Our ancestors call it libation. When you do it today, they say, no, it's evil, it is fetish, it is demonic. You are the one losing. If we want to twist the rule, hot drink uh, 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 play, in our prayers, it will amaze you. And that is why you see every morning our ancestors come before the God they serve with hot drink. It's not about the intoxication, it's about the implication. And now look at the first miracle of Jesus. He turned water into wine. That is what they said. Well, they want you to believe it is cook or Fanta. He turned water into wine. Now, if water turned to wine, is it ever wine? Is it all this expensive wine? Or is it palm wine? You will see, it is palm wine. And so if it is palm wine, where do they make hot drink? The one we call Kai Kai or Oguguru or Apatashi. The hot drink, where does it come from? You will see, it is almost 99.9% uh, natural resources. No chemical added. God made the palm tree. You cut down the palm tree or it can still be standing. You look for a way to extract the juice, which is referred to as for wine. And then you heat it up in a cooking pot. And after applying some uh, uh, degree of, uh, 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 I mean, some centigrade of heat on it, it becomes a wine. It's an object of prayer. The Christians do that every day in the service. But it is modernized. So you follow the modern way. But these were part of our culture and tradition. Understand, I'm trying to take you back home. So you can become more useful and enjoy what you already have before now. Almost every Sunday, some of you have Holy Communion. 
And now they make you believe is Fanta and Coke. And Jesus offered them flesh and blood, which is the wine. Drink it in memory of me. Which wine did Jesus give to them? Jacob wine or Israelite wine? Because if the pan wine is called wine, which produces Oguguru, something is not okay. Now, this is not about criticism. This is about projecting to you objects of prayer. They use wine, hot drink. This is how our ancestors enter the presence of God. And then you have alligator pepper. Most of us know about alligator pepper. If you are a man and you are listening to me, I mean, if you are a man, whether you are married or you are not married, you are a young man, you are living on your own, and you tell me in your house you don't have alligator pepper, my brother, a lot of things is missing in your life. And of course, most of you in diaspora, you may find it difficult to assess it, but it's still around you. You have African shops there. One alligator seed, one alligator fruit can have more than a hundred seed. Do you have one in your home? Do you know the role it plays? But you see, our ancestors used all these things. It was easy, convenient for us to condemn them, demonize them, relegate them to the background. And then we'll come up the other way in pretense, make use of it as if it is in a more modernized way. I need you to try and free your mind to be able to get the truth behind our discussion this morning on the seven dimension. And then we look at another one, which is coconut. A lot of churches today give you assignment. They say, go and get a coconut. Do like this with coconut. We don't feel it's fetish. Because it comes from the purified religion. And so it is Holy Ghost directed. But the point is, where in the Bible did God actually talk about coconut? Using coconut to do prayer. And so when I'm talking to you this morning, you believe you are a Christian, you believe you are a religious man, you have been taught to demonize your culture and tradition, and then you still go to church for assignment with your coconut, you are just hypocritically doing what you are doing. Those who are supervising over you spiritually will even tap your blessing without your knowledge. A lot of churches today, when they give you assignment, they say go for coconut. But in our culture and tradition, all these things are present. It's just that when they ask you do like this, they say, no, it is, it is fetish. It is demonic. I can't get involved. But when it is brought into a religious body, in the guise of a saint, the same process become holy, sanctified. But understand, the point is not going to criticism. The point is presenting to you the object of prayer as used by our ancestors. And then we look at the other one, which is the cola knot. What is the cola knot? What is the implication of how many parts that cola knot have? Why is it often projected in, in our prayers by our ancestors? It's quite deeper. I would not want to confuse you, but I will look for a way to send this message across to everyone. When our ancestors wake up in the morning, when they gather to have fellowship with their brethren, with their king's men, when they present this cola, they will say, he who brings cola brings life. And I'm sure you are familiar with that slogan. Most churches today, they will say, he who brings Jesus brings life. This slogan is used not to promote Jesus, but to demonize the culture of breaking cola nuts. These were some of the objects of prayer.
our ancestors understand how to engage some of these items we have mentioned when they want to offer prayers. To you, it doesn't mean it's fetish. If I can open my mouth and then I pray and then I move on, one then should begin to ask himself some questions. For instance, the three wise men visited the Jesus when he was born. The Bible made reference of the gift more than the givers. Some call them the Magi, some call them the three wise men from the East, and, and other names. But they will never fail to tell you that they gave good, merit, and frankincense. Why are they so much interested in the name of the gift they gave? And I'm sure they gave more than that. They picked after it because symbolically they have a role to play. And then you will hear Elijah went to offer sacrifice to God. And when he has caught the bull or the animal, when he has split the blood, and then he brought a wine or oil and then poured upon it, and then he set fire on it, and God accepted it. Why were they narrating? They would have just said he prayed. Because the essence of every protocol that has been observed is that you pray. The prince of Baal understand this. So when they want to ask God to intervene, they have to even cut themselves, do whatever they want to do, perform so many acrobatic dance. These were objects of prayers. Today, you want to repair your society. Today, you want to repair your family. Today, you want to lay foundation for your life. Today, you want your life to be meaningful. Today, you want to create an avenue where you can eventually become invincible. A lot of people have challenges. They have problems. But you see, this problem can never consume them. This is because they know how to pray. And now, because you know how to pray, does it mean you will not have challenges in your life? Does it mean you will not have problems in your lives? They will be there of the truth. For sure, you will have all these challenges which are normal to man. And that is why the Bible says, Elijah was a man like me and you. He was a man of like passion. He was a man weak like every other man. But you see, he prayed earnestly. He prayed earnestly. And when they say he prayed earnestly, you go back and study the pattern of Elijah prayer. You see, a lot of praying objects were added there. There are a lot of things our prayers can do. And there are a lot of miracles that accompany this prayer object. And it is my desire and intention to lead you into those truths. Two people will go out in search of something. One will get it, the other will not. Even when you are more qualified, and many people feel while others succeed, even when they should not succeed, but yet they do. Now the war to sustain your family, the war to win every war, it's not just tied to the vocal prayer. It is tied to certain prayer objects, which I want our people to wake up, rise beyond religion and its implication. View your culture and tradition. Find out the secret behind them, because if you fail to discover it, others will discover it, and you will buy it for money. I see some churches, when they are going for assignment, that area where that church is could not become very expensive. It looks they were going to a harbanist, a native doctor, a juju man. But they were going to the house of Christ. The point is, would this pastor be referred to as a fetish man? Would this pastor be said as a evil man? Hell no! They understand one truth you don't understand. Or maybe you know, but you are too holy to believe them. 
if we want to conquer in life, if we want to rectify the errors in the very foundation of our lives, you must learn to pray. It's the beginning of all the whole process. Once you dream, it accompanies prayer. When you dream and you don't pray, you may not be able to go far. But when you dream and then you pray, you are almost invisible. I don't want to use that word because nobody is invisible. But you may, for some certain reason, be unpredictable. I have fought wars in my life. I have seen situations and circumstances which by every means they are meant to destroy me. I should not be alive today. I have walked between the living and the dead. I have seen reason why I should back down. And triumphantly I have succeeded where many people fail. And this is not because I am righteous. This is not because I am better than you. This is not because I am more connected than you. I know something you don't know. So if you are in the village listening to this audio, you have a grandmother, you have a grandfather, or they are elderly people, they believe in culture and tradition, follow their prayer section every morning. You will see the way the men pray is different from the way the women pray. Try and read in between the lines. You will understand what Jacob prayer means. You will understand the role they are meant to play in your life. And so why would struggle and build for another man to inherit? Why will see before our very eyes our future threatened, our very lineage cut off? Why you are born into a family that has been engaged in spiritual war even before the birth of your own parents. You can change them. You can change your lot. You can reveal your destiny. You can change everything around you. I'm not telling you it's going to come on a platter of gold, but you can do that. And Jacob looked and said, You must bless me. And there are many other people Jabez who prayed and said, God, turn my life around. We're fighting for many things, but we've not engaged it in the right way. For instance, those of us who are agitating for the restoration of Biafra, those of us who are glamouring for a better Nigeria, you have prayed for as long as I can understand. But I am yet to see a Christian who offers prayer in terms of sacrifice for Nigeria. But I can tell you many Muslims and sacrifices that are done on your behalf. But it goes beyond that. Everything is a symbol. Everything has a representative. Every object of prayer can change a whole destiny. Either make it or destroy it. I'm looking at prayer, but it is also applicable in every area of life. In Genesis, when Jacob went to serve Laban, after some years he told Laban, I want to marry and go and have my own family. Laban said, then you have to serve me. For seven years. And Jacob chose to marry Leah. Or rather Rachel. And then after seven years of hard labor. Laban defrauded Jacob. But Jacob was a man of prayer. He prayed to Laban. And said I have served you these seven years. To get the one I love. Rachel. But now you have given to me Leah instead. I still love Richard and I will serve you for another seven years. And now the Bible scholars will say, Richard he wants, but Leah he needs. God understand 
that if he had married only richer, he would have only one son or two sons, Joseph and Benjamin. But the real thing he needed is Jacob, I mean, richer, Leah rather, who eventually had ten, or rather thirteen, out of all the children he has. Because he didn't have twelve, I think he has eleven children. Because he also have a bigger. Now that's not the area I'm focusing on. The area I'm focusing on is that at this point in time, Jacob found out that Levan will not let him go. Something need to be done. They had agreement. And they said, Levan said, now for me to settle you for your services this year, uh, every sheep that has stripes at birth belongs to you. The ones that are playing belongs to me. Because he thought that all the sheep are after all playing. They are either white or brownish, gold and so on. So it was easy for the sheep to have plain colors. But Jacob presented objects of prayer before God and the sheep. And the Bible says from that day onwards, every sheep that gave birth, they begin to have stripes. And so when Jacob was leaving Laban, Laban lamented that he has robbed him. He was more wealthier than Laban. Now I'm bringing this up for you to understand the object of prayer. In your prayer lives, do you have anointing oil? I'm not talking about granite oil or how we look like. Goya oil. That's not what I'm saying. It could be Goya oil, it could be granite oil, it could be anointing oil, it could be palm oil, or oil is oil. Do you have it? They tell you it is olive oil. Let's look at that a little bit. The, all the trees in the world, there is no tree as useful as the palm tree. From its root down to the, 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 the most fragile leaf, that one we call Omo. All of them have roles to play physically and spiritually. Very useful. Palm tree. It gives you can, palm kernel oil, which is highly medicinal. It gives you wood. It creates home for a lot of mago that turns into animal uh, meat for you to eat at the end of the day. It gives you much room, which is healthy for the body. It gives you broom. It gives you firewood. I say from the beginning of palm tree to the end. Very useful. And you think it's ordinary tree? We'll talk about that later. But the purpose of this discussion this morning is simple. Why does our ancestors use such objects in their prayer? And why are you not doing that? Except some of them that have been incorporated into your new modern way of worship. Could they have been wrong one way and then they are right in every other way? When I say go back to your root, there is more beneath that the eye can see. I have told you in the course of this study, in this platform, I'm not going to leave everything open. Until we are able to upgrade the platform where we can have interactive session and then you should be able to call in and ask questions. And then other people can say their own point of view and opinion. But if our ancestors did it, why are you running from it? Remember, if you have enemy there, what the enemy want to do to you is to disarm you. It will weaken you. They come in different way. I'm a Christian. But I have high regard for my culture and tradition. Because as a scholar, having just opposed, placed side by side my culture and tradition, I, I could hardly agree that almost 80 to 90% of what is in my Bible were copied from my culture and tradition. And now I'm not here to contest what is right or what is wrong. If it did happen, it did happen. And there must be a reason behind it. What is that reason? It is that reason that made you to leave your home and struggle to survive on your own. 
It is the same reason that made your parents to decide to have a child and they have you. It's the same, the same reason that will drive you to have your own family and maybe you have them already. It is the same reason that will tell you you have struggled enough and then you give up. It is this same reason that will tell you despite the level of failure you have experienced or encounter in life, you will still keep on. It is this same reason. I think you have the right to know this truth. I don't expect what I'm saying to make sense to you, all of you. Because if you engage this thing by your wisdom, if you engage this broadcast by your level of qualification in the university and your exposure, you will not learn anything. It looks to you that I'm just blabbing. It's okay. Because the Bible actually says, with the human mind, you cannot see God. If you engage God with your intellectual, you will not see him. If you engage the things of the spirit with your level of education, you will be lost because they really don't make sense. Our ancestors, one of our father woke up one morning and he took Kula not and he now called a key unko afo uli. Of course, that is also an object of prayer. A key unko afo uli. He now called them to favor him. And at the same time, he was calling him Kwa Afo Uri. He was actually referring to the four-dimensional world, the pillar of the four-dimensional world we live in. And you think somewhere along the line, he don't know what he's doing. And then he knew that somewhere along the line, you can use coconut to pray. When I talked about oil, do you know that the crude oil itself, which they extract from the ground in our land, without first of all using it to refine as fuel or diesel or aviation fuel or any other, do you know it contains miraculous property? And so I need you to go on your own research. Find out this object of prayers I have mentioned to you. And of course, for now, I'm not going to give you the rule they play. But if you want to know, the number there is a WhatsApp number. Inbox me. Ask specific question. I'll respond to you. I talked about Kula Nuts. I talked about Native Chalk. I talked about Salt. I talked about Oil. I talked about Hot Drink. I talked about the Four Marketies. I talked about alligator pepper. I talked about coconut. There are many more. They all have a role to play. They don't just pray. They do things in addition to that prayer. One can say, oh, it's, it's, it's ritual, it's evil, it's this one. No. For instance, some of you are tormented by evil spirit in your home. You know, you have nightmare. It's almost like real. Let me tell you what happened to me once as a child. I was being tormented in my dream. And the person coming will use the face of my loved ones. It is so real. I told my parents, and when I sleep, the woman will come and hold my truth. This woman will press my truth that in the real life, I know somebody is pressing my truth. When I see the person, and then the moment I manage to wake up, I will see maybe my towel or my blanket tying my neck. And he just laughed. <laughs> now, uh, it's just your towel or blanket that is tying your neck. And so maybe that is, you are just dreaming. You know, people can see so many things. But let me tell you, it's not your blanket. It is not your towel. Whatever you see holding your neck, if you have encountered such, you have had such experience, it's what they're using as a point of contact to reach you. 
And then I told my grandmother then. And my grandmother smiled. He said, when you want to sleep, take broom. Put it at every exit point in that room. If you have done it when the person entered, he cannot leave. But if you have not done it when the person has not entered, he cannot enter. And so I'll take broom, put broom by the entrance, the door, and then I'll cut some broom, just hang it by the window. Let that wind from her or her fire, let it come. They can't access that place. If they are in, they can't go out. If they are out, they can't go in. And you know what it means for them? A whole lot of frustrated night. And the broom I'm talking about is coming from palm tree. From that palm tree, you can get oil and you can get the hot drink. There is a reason God created everything around us. No one is useless. But you won't believe most of these things. Maybe because of your level of knowledge and exposure. And just ask a simple question. You think these our ancestors were drunk? And then among all the trees in the forest, the, 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 the ones they have, they would have used for, for pleasure. They choose cola not. And give it high regard. Even more than the other most nutritious fruit we have. No, think again. They play a role. You will not believe. You will not believe. These are objects of prayer. I can go on and on and on and on. But if you want to know how to use them. To pray yourself. Out of the influence of your enemy. Feel free to embolse me. It's just going to be an interactive moment. It's not as if you are not surviving. It's not as if you are not prospering. But check closely. It hurts you somewhere. You can put an end to it. I can go on and on and on and on and give you testimony I have gathered over time. Let me give you one. And then I'll bring this program to an end. There was a time in my life I was constantly confronted with challenges. Very harsh ones. Challenges capable of taking my life. But I always survive. I have had fire accidents two different times. And in one of them, I was admitted in teaching hospital in Lagos. The, 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 the man I was working for loved me so much. He told them he don't care. Whatever it's going to take for me to be okay, he will pay the bill. And this should be in the early 90s. I remember then they charged, they asked him to deposit 870,000 before they will commence treatment. It was a third degree bond. They told him, I may not be up to 21 years. I can lose my sight. I may not, I may have heart issue. I may have this and have that. Because it affected even my bloodstream. I was object of discussion. Doctors were coming from different hospitals to the teaching hospital in Lagos to look at me. Other f uh, fire victim patients, they were all there. I was an amusement to them. Because if they see my fire burn, they thank God for their own fire burn. What happened? I went to buy diesel for the company I work for. And then they have scarcity of diesel. So what the black market were doing is that they buy fuel, mix it with condemned oil, and then start selling it like diesel. And then we were turning it in the generator that night on 25 liters. And somebody put a naked light close to it and it engulfed on flame. The 25 liter exploded and I was putting on a jean and a, a, a t-shirt without button. It split all over me. I couldn't pull the shirt so they burnt me greatly. 
But in the midst of it, I survive without blemish. You won't even know. But I understand that when my mother entered the world where I was, she didn't recognize me. Because they were looking at me and my mother was saying, where's my son? Where's my son? And then my younger brother, who is in South Africa now, was the one who saw my leg and started crying and said, mommy, this is him. I survived. I can give you so many encounters. You won't even know it happened. And now what happened? I was operating a machine. And then I put my hand in the machine. And somebody at the other hand switched on the machine. Let me tell you, it cut off my hand. And, and it was midnight. Every chemist we went to said they cannot attend to me. And I cannot lose my hand. What did I do? I looked for black thread. Those of you from Nigeria, that black thread they used to plait hair and needle they used to plait hair. These are the only things I have access to. And I stitch that hand to the other part of my hand. And I bandage it. And I said to the hand, I'm not throwing you away. Rotten here, I want to see you rotten. If you are not rotten, connect back. I'm not throwing you away. When I got home, I didn't let anybody know the level of damage. Only those who witnessed it. And I kept quiet. I went to the kitchen, I on the gas. I started touching the pot with that hand. You know, it was not... It didn't pay me. It's gone, it's gone. And then all of a sudden, I begin to hear, uh, feel some, some inching. And I knew something was going to happen. And I left the hand that way. But on daily basis, it keep connecting. It look as if it's dead, but it was not dead. As I'm talking to you, the bone healed together. The hand healed back together. In fact, like three, four months later, after this hand has returned to its full capacity functioning, some crushed bone within my flesh begin to exit by themselves. As I'm talking to you, I don't even remember except the scar. And I told somebody, I say, this is the story of my life, full of challenges. And I always conquer. And the person said to me, now it's time to put an end to that conquer. He said, Yoruba man, a very good friend. He said, this was what was happening to me. And when I told my mother, my mother said, even though you are surviving, they cannot continue, put an end to it. He showed me how to pray. And ever since then till now, it's not about how many pain I go through to survive. Pain don't come anymore. Most of you are like that. From one challenge to another, from one problem to another, from one problem, but you survive. Now, what is the story of your life? How you were thrown in jail and you spent 30 years and then you come back, you start all over again, you were able to meet up and then somebody poisoned you, now you are running and how to take care of yourself and then you survive another person. Is that the story of your life? Of course, it's supposed to happen. They are bound to happen. But you can put an end to it. I can go on and on and on and tell you so many pattern of prayer depending on the challenge you are facing you need to have a dream and that dream must be backed by prayer when jacob fled for his life when joseph fled for his life he had a dream and what did he do with the dream he prayed about it or rather Jacob he prayed about it and so there were obstacles there were instances there were situations meant to stop him he had all jet of prayer in that prayer 
And that is why when he was returning home, he could come to that moment, object of prayer, and appreciate God for keeping to his own part of the bargain. And then his brother, God made his brother and all that enemy to be at peace with him. Believe me, Esau was ready to destroy him. Esau was not left behind. There are many battles we fight in life. The weapon we are using determined has so much role to play. Some of you are born survivor. Nothing can stop you. Or must you struggle all your life? Is it because you know nobody can kill you? So you have to be killed over and resurrect and be killed over and resurrect and be killed? Some of us are like that. Or you can stop it. I train animal, different kind of animal. And I've noticed something unique about most of them. I still have one. It's one of the oldest animal I have in my compound. It's a bed, a Nola bed. I bought them set by set some years ago. And I trained all of them. In the midst of it, you have mortality. Some of them will die. I bought this with the first set of beds I ever trained. And then what happened? Some fell sick, all the ones that fell sick, all of them died. This Noila refused to die. It was still sick. I brought in another set. Those ones who were cockroach, very harsh. They blinded one of the eyes of that Noila. In that stick mood. Now, the Noila refused to die. And I just can't kill it. And so I begin to pay attention. He made three different stages of bed. He was sick in all of them. And of course, others developed sickness along the line. All of them died. But among all of them, that bed refused to die. And then what I do is I just took it out because I just don't have that mind to kill the fowl. So I kept it on one side. In the morning I'll bring it out, drop it on one side and be watching it. Do you know, gradually it began to recover, gradually it began to recover as I'm talking to you. It's so strong, even stronger than our native fowls. It's a testimony. Most of us are like that. But I tell you, if it were to be human, to recount what he has gone through, it's not an easy journey. And so if you had the gene of survivor, you can still survive without going through all these challenges. That is exactly what we are here to represent. On this note, I will stop here, and then you have a dream. Something stands between you and the dream. And the only way for you to succeed is your ability to pray. And the prayer I'm talking about this time is not just making retestation and no, confronting prayer in its fullness. And that is in the present of object of prayer. You need to learn how to pray with the seven dimension. I mean the four dimension. You need to pray on how to use water, how to use salt, how to use cool or not, how to use alligator pepper, how to use anointing oil. Most of of them you already have brief knowledge of it. But this is for you, or the time for you, to be the native doctor of yourself, the pastor of yourself, the afa of yourself, the imam of yourself, whatever of yourself. Doctors may not be able to heal themselves, depending on the kind of illness they encounter. But I'm very sure every doctor can be able to give themselves first aid, 
address. They can rescue, remedy the situation. They can take care of themselves instantly before they seek for the services of other expatriates in the, 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 based on the sickness they encounter. And so the WhatsApp line is there. Be free. This morning from this end of the world. Don't let prayer become burden for you. Don't let prayer become hard work for you. Don't let prayer to be mystic or mysterious. If you don't want to open your mouth, you can pray till, let's say from 11 o'clock till I start this program. I think I've been praying all the time, outside one hour. If this is, a, uh, 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 what is the time now? I think I have been awake since 11 o'clock. From that 11 till I start this program, I've been praying. Nobody knows. The people in the room don't know I'm praying. And I keep saying what I want over and over and over again. And you see, most people say, he don't pray. He's not praying. But you don't know. David say, I'm a man of prayer. And so I give myself to prayer. Some people you see succeeding. Some people you see escaping death. Some people you see miracle happens in their life. Some of them know this secret already. And how do you know this secret? This is the seventh dimension. We are taking you back to our roots. We are not taking you to build shrine and start doing or go more or easy more. And certainly we are not against you. We are trying to point your attention to the principle, to the strategy, to the method through which our ancestors did certain things they did. They found peace with God. They secured the society as we know them today and create a enabling environment for me and you to be alive. And as we continue on this issue, we're just starting with prayer. We've not even gone into other elements like praise or worshipping. Just looking at the, because before you pray, before you worship, and all that things, there are other things that comes there. We'll continue bringing this information to you, and how I wish you understand their power. There are things people don't tell you. You don't take no for an answer. There are areas of your life that nobody should influence, and you cannot be left at the mercy of anybody. Yet they will try to do that. But you see, because you know what you are supposed to do. When they say otherwise, you will overrule their decision. And of course, they are guided by principle of righteousness and integrity. In the essence of that, you may not be able to get the full benefit of the implications. I remain George Onibe, and I sign off from here. Please, Understand this are uh, important issue. Leave reasonable comment. Ask reasonable questions. And of course, you want to get in contact with me one on one regarding this issue. Inbox me on WhatsApp. Some of you are having problem with your children. You're having problem with your husband and your wife, and you cannot manage it. Not even your pastor. Sometimes the the difference there is just a minor thing. There's something you are doing because it's who you are. And the thing affects them because they are who they are. And that's when the Bible says, make allowance for each other's fault. Let's keep growing. Let's go back and find out what our ancestors labored over the years, hundreds of thousands of years, to acquire this knowledge. And then, in the temple of an eye, we threw them away. We say they are fetish. You say they are evil and sometimes barbaric. But the same process has saved life for generations. Do have a pleasant day ahead of you. A sign off from you. Goodbye for now.